Welcome back to What's Up Cuz. How do your boys feel about their sister having a boyfriend? But I would be doing the same thing! Yes. You don't get along with me, there's a problem. <laughs> your family's opinion matters. Buddy had unexpected foot surgery. If you like the guy, go talk to him. That's probably the advice I would've gave too, I have to say. No, not at all. I raised her well, yeah. Erica. You made a good call. That's how I would approach it. She gets the days, I get the nights. Before she goes, I wanna answer this first. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Up Cuz. I am your co-host Erica Spira. And I'm Lisa Velastro. And we've got another great episode for you guys this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so as always, what's what's new, Lisa? It's just me and you today. Just me and you today. Yeah. You know, once in a while, it's, you know, good to just catch up with you. My husband, this past weekend, my husband and I hosted, we call it the annual Little Fairy reunion okay so whoever if we, what you guys don't realize is or maybe you do realize is that my husband grew up in little ferry new jersey mm -hmm. and um you know 20 years go by life takes over everyone goes in different directions and you know you have your your core group of friends but you don't see them as often as you'd like to and everyone gets married and has kids so we try to once a year have a little ferry reunion mm -hmm. and uh just so happened that it just passed this past weekend and it was, I want to say it was, we ended up being like 75 people. That's a really good. Yeah, because, you know, everyone's married now and yeah. everyone has kids. And it's crazy because when we went through the guest list, I ended up with more kids than adults. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. So I'm like, all right. But, but they all range in different age ranges. So believe it or not, Buddy and I have the oldest kids. You know, we got married yeah. first. We started having kids first. So... A lot of the age ranges of the kids are anywhere between, let's say, 7 and 17. Mm, okay. And uh, it was crazy to see, A, the amount of kids that were mm -hmm. here, and B, you know, in one year, you don't even recognize some of these kids. Yeah. You well, know, especially now, it's like, how many years? Because the, all the shutdown. Exactly. There's so many people I keep running into that I'm like... Oh, I haven't seen this person in two years. Yeah. And I don't realize it till I'm talking to them and they're like, I don't live in New York anymore. I'm like, what? Like I, I haven't even seen them. It's insane. It's mm -hmm. completely insane. And then you have the kids that you know exactly who parents they belong to because they look like twins. Mm -hmm. And then you have the kids that are like, hmm, wonder who that one belongs to. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. But you know, I love doing it for my husband. He enjoys it, you know, with 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 the show starting up years ago and him traveling so much at one point, there was a couple of years that went by that he didn't see his friends, mm. you know, and it's nice just to catch up. And, and it's nice to see that even though you don't see each other often, it's like you saw them, you know, yesterday when you started talking and it was just nice to see everybody and see where everyone is in life. And, you know, I, there, I'm getting questions of, oh, how is it with your daughter going to college? And I'm asking them, well, how is it with, you know, mm -hmm. this age group? Because I can't imagine going back to that age group. It, it's just everyone is in different stages of life. And yeah. it's nice to reminisce and, you know, think back to back in the day and to where we are now. What I was going to say, is it so is it everyone that like he technically went to high school with or is this like people that just lived in the town, almost like a big block party of everyone I, I you grew up with. I want to say it was a little bit of both. Yeah, okay. So, you know, back in the day, playtime wasn't video games. It was playing on the block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a bunch of people from from the block, and, and it's it's crazy. Okay, so you guys know the story on how my husband and I met. Buddy used to live next door to his cousin, and his cousin was my parents' best friends. Right. So even you didn't, though did you grow up in Little Fairy? No, no, I did not grow up That's in Little That's what I was going to clarify. Yeah. But I felt like I kind of grew up on the block. Right. Because we were so close with Buddy's cousins that we were there a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. So I remember seeing them out on the block and in their cars and, you know, playing wiffle ball, even though I wasn't yet connected with my husband at that point yeah i think you told me once you would like would watch like from like there was like some window yes, upstairs and yes, you'd look at him playing uh -huh. with all the sisters yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. yep yeah because they're so, always a fun time i'd be yeah. looking over too. like they seem like a lot of fun exactly yeah. exactly so so i remember everyone he grew up with and on top of it i have my cousins that grew up in little ferry mm. that he went to school with okay so my cousins were here so it, it's like a, a big convoluted family. <laughs> yeah, it was like it's like a family reunion and block party. Reunion. Exactly. So that's what we did this past week, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and it was fun. A lot of screaming kids, a lot of you know, 
different personalities. Everyone running around. Everyone running around. It's crazy. You know, I hired one lifeguard this year, but I think next year I'm going to hire two. <laughs> yeah, several, several, everything. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you get, double it. Maybe even four, each corner of the pool. I know. And it's so funny that so many times in those situations, like I have, you know, girls I played basketball with or went to high school with or college, like so many different like walks of life. And it is so true of like often just nobody takes the initiative to be the planner to get everyone yeah. together. But the minute someone just picks a date mm-hmm. and just sends out an invite, you usually are amazed. That's of- me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I'm usually the one that picks the day and plans. Wait, did you have it here at your house? Oh, it was here at the house. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. It was yeah. here at the house. <laughs> hey, listen, if you know me, you know I throw a good party. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not at all <laughs> doubting that. But uh, yeah, but it is just so funny that like I'm usually the planner of my friends mm-hmm. and it just takes the one, you know, yep. invite and the date and everyone's always so excited to get invited. Yeah. Like I've realized that with friendships uh, as I've gotten older is like sometimes I'd feel like, oh, I haven't heard from this person or like they don't make the effort. And some people just are not planners. No, they're just they just want to get invited. They don't want to host. They don't want to be in charge. Like, but every time you see them, you have a great time. Exactly. So I don't know it's always, always planning. Yeah. It's, of course it was, it was here. I can't believe I even asked that question. Yeah, come on, Erica. You should know better than that. <laughs> You're like, that's why we got the pool. Yeah. <laughs> to get everybody. There you go. You know what else I had, which was amazing? Hmm. This walking magician. Really? He was absolutely amazing. Like Everyone would go around the party? Go around with little groups of people and do these amazing tricks. And, and we were all like astonished. Like, yeah. How the hell did he do that? That's also not an easy job to have. No. I, I know someone that they would get hired to do that as a comedian and uh-huh. i was like that is the worst idea ever. <laughs> i'm like that's hard of like you just walk up to a small group and try to perform that i'm like yeah magician that's a scenario when someone goes what if we had a comedian run around i'm like get get a magician get someone that you does magic that's a good idea erica i might have to think about that yeah for next year, uh, i don't know I, i'm okay <laughs> 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 it's, it's terrifying Especially yeah. in those scenarios, people are always like, just make fun of me. I'm like, ah, I might get fired. <laughs> like, you know? You're funny. It's yeah, hard. no, no, it was it was a great time. It mm-hmm. was a really, really good time. Yeah. Um, well, if we don't have any other updates, we can get to the emails for the week. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, thank you guys for emailing in. And if you want to send us a question, it's what's up cuz pod at gmail.com. That's what's up cuz pod at gmail.com. So question for this week. The first one here we have is called always late. Oh, boy. All right, a little long, so bear with me. Uh, Dear Lisa and Erica, my boyfriend's tardiness has gotten old. We've been together for almost six months, and this has always been a problem, but is increasingly bugging me, and I'm not sure how to address it in order to find a solution. We're in a long-distance relationship, so whether it is him picking me up from the airport late because it doesn't leave in time to get there, and then she puts in parentheses, I always text him when we're rolling on the runway for takeoff, or hoping... (laughs) Or hopping onto a call past the time we agreed. Most of the time, he is late for things. I am not a chronically late person, so this difference between us is really irritating. I don't want to have to say something every single time, and I don't feel like I should have to. And we already talked about this. I respect people's time in general, so it feels like a slap in the face when I am constantly waiting on him, especially when there has been an agreement made hours and hours of time in advance. Since this is likely how he has always been, I know it will take a bit for things to change, but what is a practical solution for him or me to address this other than obviously having another conversation about it? Any advice would help. Thanks. Well, obviously, he's got a little problem with being on time. I mean, yeah, it's very clear. Mm. Um, in my opinion, how, how, I mean, how, or how are we talking a couple minutes late? Are we talking a couple hours late? You know, we really don't know yeah. how late he is for everything um but it sounds like it's a problem yeah especially i understand with distance yeah you're already like i don't get to see you a lot and if you're supposed to call me at seven and it's 7 30 i'd be annoyed yeah and i yeah. feel like if someone cares for you that much they actually would be early because they can't wait to talk to you or they can't wait to pick you up from the airport mm-hmm. So I would want to know what the hell is he doing that is making him late all the time. Right. That would be a thought in my mind. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You know, listen, let me give you back a story from my husband and I. Okay. Because, you know, we always bring back stories here. So we are both very prompt people, believe it or not. But the one thing my husband from day one never liked was waiting for anybody. Mm. Buddy does not wait for anybody. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I'm also a very prompt person when it comes to timing. Yeah. So grow, you know, through the years and, and having kids, anytime we needed to go somewhere, I made sure that I was ready and the kids were ready and we would be waiting for my husband in the car. <laughs> really? But it That's was always impressive. like a five minute wait. It was never because he was always pretty prompt too. Yeah. So what we would do is, you know, when I knew I had 20 minutes left to finish everything up, I would give him the 20 minute mark and be like, okay, go in the shower. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've always done it through the years. Oh, you mean so you tell your husband? Exactly. So he, you almost would have him start just a little later than everybody else. Exactly. Oh, that's so a good trick. He would say to me, let me know when you want me to go in the shower. So okay. I would time it as I would get ready, the kids, you know, dressed. And when I knew I was like 20 minutes away from being completely done, mm. then I would be like, bud, go in the shower. And we would kind of, you know, end up in the car together or waiting a couple minutes which is nothing yeah so that's how we adjusted to our wait times if you want to say mm -hmm. which i was happy with because i'd like to be settled and in because once buddy goes buddy's ready to go yeah like you know so i i needed to make sure that all my stuff was done i think they have to come up with some type of a game plan with each other after she finds out what's making him late all these times yeah <laughs> because really. that would be my first question Again, this is a long distance relationship we're talking about here. And if you mm -hmm. truly love someone, I, I know that, you know, and is this the dating stage? I believe it is. Yeah, she right? said they've been together six months. So it still is new. Yeah, it's very new. Mm -hmm. And this is when you want to be really early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. You think it's like honeymoon phase. I, exactly. Yeah. So if there's issues now in six months, I would A, find out what the hell is making him late. And B, if you don't like the answer, run. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I have some guy friends. Mm -hmm. That's very much a deal breaker for them. Of They're these type of people. And they hate if they set up a date with a girl and she's late to showing up to the date. Like yeah. they're like, especially I live in New York, trains, delays, whatever, exactly. traffic. You give like kind of this 15 minute window. Yeah. yeah and that's fair. Yeah. That is fair. That they're like, all right, 15, I'll give a take. But they're like, yeah, half hour. But 15 minutes, not all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let's be clear here. No, but I know got people that are like, this is a deal breaker for me if someone's like late. Like they, yeah. they, they just won't even go out with them again. But I don't They're blame like, them it. because when, when everything is new and fresh, you want to be there early. You mm -hmm. can't wait to see that person. You can't wait to talk to that person. If it's happening like this now... And he's let's just like, let's just assume it's you know thirty minutes late or whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. What's gonna be five years down the road? Two hours late? Right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You have to be a little better than that. I know. It's so funny in your scenario though too. Of like, have you ever seen? Did you ever watch Everybody Loves Raymond? No. There's an amazing episode they do about, and it's the classic scenario most husbands complain of. You know, they start getting ready at the same time as their wives, and they're always like sitting downstairs waiting to go. Yeah. And then they'll start watching a game or something, and then the woman's like, "Let's go," and then they don't want to turn off the game. The classic complaint from men is like, uh -huh. "I'm always waiting on my girl to finish getting ready." Right. Yeah. So Deborah cuts a deal with Ray of she he gives her a time to be in the car. Okay. Because he's like, "Going to this party, they're gonna have c cocktail hour. I don't uh -huh. want to miss the cocktail hour." And she goes, "Okay, what's the time I need to be in the car? And if I'm not in the car, you can leave." Okay, that's a and good one. They cut a deal, right? Okay. But then something happens, of course, like something comedically, she gets like her hair stuck in her curly iron or, or uh -huh. something. And he's sitting in the car waiting. So she doesn't come out on the time and he leaves and he shows up to the party and all the like husbands are like, wait, you just left her? <laughs> They're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And they're like, I would never do it. I'd be dead. Uh -huh. So he, he goes to this party essentially without her, comes home, it's a big fight. But it is this classic scenario I've like seen in movies. I've seen it with my own parents. Mm -hmm. It's always the guy being like, oh, I'm always waiting on her. So I'm like, usually it's the opposite of this. Which is why this is so surprising. Very surprising. But you guys should try my theory. Just tell him when you're 20 minutes out. Depending on how long it takes him to get ready too. Like I know that if yeah. my husband just has to shower and get ready, it's 20 minutes to the dot. Mm -hmm. But if he's got to put a suit or a tuxedo on, it's 30 minutes to the dot. Yeah. So, you know, we've been married you know, 20 plus years now. So we kind of adjusted to how long it takes each yeah. other to get ready. Um, I not to give me props, but I usually am pretty quick. That I really yeah. am, especially now that the kids are older and they dress themselves. Yeah, and you just focus you on know, you. No, when they were younger, I had it down packed to a schedule. 
That's impressive. I mean, I can't imagine getting like two kids ready at the same time. Imagine four. Like myself. Yeah. <laughs> imagine four. Yeah. No, I can't. That's why I'm like, I don't, I don't know how you got everyone in the car. And then it's like, who do I start with? Because by the time I finish with the fourth, I don't want the first one to need to get redone again. <laughs> that, well, that's even more important. Is who sits? Is it who sits still the most? Is that how you decide? It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Who sits still? And <laughs> usually it was my daughter getting done first. So I would get myself done first. I was yeah. priority number one. And then I would go down the line of the kids. Okay. And obviously, um, at one point, I have to say, it was my daughter first, and then it was Carlo. Because, you know, once you dress a baby, they really can't move around or do yeah, anything. Yeah, right. And then I would go down to the boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like you strap them each into, like, a stroller or something yeah. when they're done. So and they then, you know, my car was always parked in the garage. So as soon as, like, Sophia was in, I'm like, go sit in the car. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Something. Uh, I was going to say, a lot of times I feel like in this scenario of the airport, mm-hmm. they probably aren't leaving till you like text them right when the plane lands, realistically, uh-huh. right? I would say if it's worth buying the Wi-Fi on the plane for $7, yeah. almost do that when you're like, okay, we're landing in 15 minutes, like when the when you got to put the tray tables up, send the text then. Yeah, but that's BS too, I know Erica. it's BS, it's but it so is a trick. It's so easy right now. If, all you know, if you know the flight information, it's an app. Yeah. You could actually track the airplane as it's landing. Not only that, you can make it send him a text when it lands. It, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and and it's sad that you even have to do that because if it's a long distance relationship, he should be waiting in the airport parking lot for yeah. you. Let's be honest. You well, know? How, how crazy is it that people used to go all the way to the gate with people in I airports? I know. I remember that. I mean, I see that in old movies. I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't old enough to remember when that was legally an yeah. option. But I was like... You know, men, people, everyone and everywhere, but especially men, should be very much celebrating. Like, there's no more chivalry of you need to walk me all the way to the gate. Yeah. You know, you're just exactly. dropping me off at the door. Yeah, it's seriously. Not that bad. I mean, there's been plenty of times that, you know, because obviously, you know, my husband travels a lot. Mm-hmm. And there's been times that sometimes I have to pick him up. And I am there way before, A, because I miss him. Yeah. And I want to see him. And B, I know that once my husband gets off that plane, he's going to want to get into the car and go home. Yeah, he's going to like snag someone else's driver exactly. if you're not there. Yeah, like, you want me? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think we have time for one more quick one here. All right, guys. Again, if you want to email us, it's what's up, cuzpod at gmail.com. All right. This is a quick one here. It's called Transferring Schools. What's up, cuz? My name is Gabriella. I'm a huge fan of Cake Boss and your family, and I'm a junior transferring to UD in the fall. Lisa, from a parent perspective, how have you liked UD as a parent and how has Sophia's experience been as a student? Do you have any recommendations on things to get involved with and around Newark? Well, Sincerely, I'm, Gabriella, sorry. I'm so happy that you're transferring to UD, Gabriella. I think that you are going to be so happy. Um, you know, the college process for my daughter and I was a little bit different because it was during COVID. Mm-hmm. So... To tell you that we got to go see all the colleges that she applied to, we didn't. I'm mm. going to be honest. Uh, we got to see a handful of them, which was a great experience in itself. But I have to tell you, seeing the handful that we did, when we stepped on the UD campus, we know that's where she, she belonged. Um, we liked that it was a college town. We liked that there was a main street that all the kids, you know, used to go eat at and no matter what time of day it was, morning, noon, or night, the streets were always full. And we loved the campus itself. It felt as as big as the school is, it still felt homey, if that makes sense. Yeah, I visited so, before. It's nice. Yeah, isn't it? Like, it still feels homey, even though it's so big. Yeah, and I that was a big thing when I looked at schools was I was like, I want the campus and the area that it's like, I'm with all the college kids. Exactly. That was the negative I heard from many people I knew that went to schools in a big city, mm-hmm. is they were like, technically, this is our campus, so mm-hmm. I, but we're mixed with so many people yeah. that you like, they felt it was harder to meet other people. Yes. And, and Delaware is a beautiful school. Beautiful school. And I have to say, they did a great job at, with their orientation and with their new students coming in to get everyone to know each other. Okay. So so we she had a really great first year. And I think you transferring as a junior there, I think I really do believe that you'll have the same great experience. I have no doubt. I think they do a really great job at, at intermingling with everybody and, and having so much out there to go to to meet new people here's a big question so when i first went to school when parents weekend came up i didn't have my parents come my freshman year because i was like i was at a small school first of all Mm -hmm. and i was on the basketball team and i didn't know 
if people usually have their parents come. Really? Like I was like, I don't want to be the one kid that has their parents here and no one else does. And I was too like, sh- not shy, but I just, I felt weird asking. So Erica, I kind of was like, funny. I was like, ma, I was like, let me feel out what the parents weekend is the first time. And like, you know, I got three more years. You can come. That is so funny. But it was because I, I didn't really know the girls in the team. And then turns out we do like a little, we play pickup and all the parents would come watch and mingle and like meet everyone. Then we all had like bagels at someone's house. And I remember feeling so bad that I was like, oh, I didn't invite I'm my parents. That's why I'm shocked because yeah. usually it's the freshman year that the parents all do come. Well, that's the thing. I didn't want to be the like needy freshman with my parents. But I was going to ask you, you went for a freshman year. Did I you did. feel like most people do have their parents? everybody had their parents okay. and we did things that we we did something called <laughs> daging daging <laughs> oh daging. day raging is that what that is you know we went to a frat house you know all the parents were there yeah it was actually a great experience well, there you go you know so we glad that we did it the first year and now it's like if we don't do it the following years, we don't do it. You know, it all depends on what, you know, Sophia wants to do. I was the opposite. I was like, I didn't let him come the first year. That's so funny. Because I, I didn't know. I was like, I didn't want to be, essentially, I thought of it as like the loser on my team. No. That it was like, oh, that freshman had her parents come, you know, kind of thing. But then, funny, then when I was a senior, it was like my job to host the parents mm-hmm. weekend. If I had the townhouse, so after the game, everybody came over. Like, yeah. And it's it, there's traditions you pass on. But th- if that's something I think that's good to know for her is like, hey, parents weekend, people do bring parents. Exactly. Don't feel weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess our last question, anything to get involved with? I mean, Sophia's in a sorority. Sophia's in a sorority. Great way to meet people, especially yes, if you transfer. A great way. And you know what the good thing is about the sorority is you could do as much as you want and as least as you want to. Yes. But you still have that friend those friends you still have a connection yeah um sophia's met great people through her sorority and i would say that is the first and one way to get to know other people if you're in sports that's like being in a sorority yeah they have club teams there exactly so if you're not d1 you could do the club team which is always great and if those two options are not on on your list they have so many different types of clubs there that yeah. you could be involved in. Delaware has a lot. Yeah. Or also even with campus jobs. Oh, yeah. There's another easy way to meet people. Yeah. Especially if you like watching sports. Yeah. Try to get something in the sports facility. That's always yeah. fun. Yeah. Sophia actually just told me this year that um, someone in her sorority put out if someone could babysit on, you know, these days a week and stuff like that. And she put in for it, you know. Okay. It's an- another way to meet people. Yeah, definitely. You know, I know her roommate, they have an apartment this year and Sophia's roommate, um, Got a job right downstairs at the, one of the restaurants, mm-hmm. you know, which is great. So, Not bad. Yeah, that's they, another one, actually. You work in the bar restaurant. Yeah. You'll meet everybody that comes in. Exactly. I, Th- there's, I have to say, it's a great place to go to because there's no way you're not meeting people. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say look look for stuff that's going to just make you be social. Exactly. My college had a wine and cheese club that got started. Yes. Udell has it, that it, too. Isn't it great? But I was uh-huh. like, what? This is really a club? Like, yeah. I, think, I think it was called the cheese club. They couldn't legally call it the wine yeah. and cheese, but yeah. that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And I remember going and I was a senior and I was like, oh, there's all these people here I haven't met. And yeah. I had a bunch of friends, but I still was like, this was just nice to meet people that were like involved in different things. Yeah. So the good thing is, is that they have so many different clubs and there's got to be an interest that you have that you could just join and you you make lifelong friends that way yeah definitely but you'll love it it's a great school my brother went there he loved it i know several people that went we love it i'm hoping my son buddy follows in her footsteps i was gonna say i was like we're we're hoping maybe another velastro i hope so we'll see that or florida not bad not bad either but udell's closer i know closer (laughs) very much closer uh but yeah, that's all we have for today. So thank you guys for emailing in. You want to email us a question. It's what's up cause pod at gmail.com. And thank you so much for listening or watching on YouTube. Please subscribe wherever you're listening. And uh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks guys. Till next time. Bye. Bye.